All right, today is the day, and we are doing Irrite Friday. Working on the tub, we are still doing some laminations on the tub. And I know some of you out there all suddenly going to start bawling because you've seen too much laminations. I hear the cries on the comments, but that is what we are working on. We are working on the tub and we need to get it to a point where we can do some other things. But I've had some people um, asking some questions about the laminations on the tub and in particular, the use of working on dry surfaces, meaning that we are not just doing one continuous lamination from start to finish and being done with it. Why does it seem like this thing's getting stretched out for so long? And the process behind this whole complex fabrication laminations of this tub. We're gonna take a look at that today. We can do some testing of some samples too, to kind of show you what we're talking about in that um, system of working on a dry surface when we do our second, third, fourth, multiple layers anyway. Anyway, let's jump in, take a look. So there are a few problems with trying to do a lamination in uh, putting a piece of fabric over the whole surface. And of course, one of the first things you'll find is that uh, the fabric isn't made big enough to cover the whole surface. When you tally up the whole surface of this thing, it would probably be about 14 feet width in the fabric. And well, fabrics usually come in uh, right around the three foot widths or up to 54 or 60 inch, but still that's certainly not gonna cover the whole surface. You can also see a problem in when you have a piece of fabric that there is not enough flexibility to conform around all the surfaces. So you have to kind of break that down into pieces that are manageable. Um, now here, as we've been doing this tunnel, we're gonna break it into three pieces to achieve the full wrap and to get the full strength out of the thing. So what's happening is the fabric is coming down and lapping over this bend. You, of course, just kind of pick where those bends are gonna occur. We could have worked by starting down the bottom edge of the tub and working to the center, but we just cannot make all those bends. The more bends or folds you add into the lamination, the more chance there is of those two start to pull away and uh, leave air gaps in some of these either on the corners or in the inside recesses but you just can't add too many folds or bends into a lamination so like i said we just start taking and reduce it down to the most we can cover without having too many joints but we're gonna have to have the joints anyway so it's just a matter of picking what's going to be the best so in this one we are starting as close to the center of the tunnel as we can and wrapping, trying to come around this bend so that we can in the end do a full lamination on the bottom of the tub that will lap over to that. Now the reason that those can't just keep going is when you have a piece of fabric, you can typically do one bend or two bends, but as soon as you add a third or a fourth, you just start to work your fabric and it starts to uh, basically tug and it'll pull it out of the last bend that you just tried to accomplish. Of course, the only way you can do that is to have a mold and a system like vacuum bagging or a press to push the pieces together and they will distort the fabric as far as they need to. But you don't want to distort the fabrics. So if you ever go and you have the opportunity to find a video of Koenigsegg they have a lot of videos showing some of their layup in their prepreg systems and you'll see even then that they will be using pieces that are cut out that only make a few bends and they will tuck them into the molds pull out another piece of prepreg tuck it into the mold and keep working that same way now when you come around these corners some of them are so complex that the piece of fabric of this biaxial cloth does really good on a single bend but when you try to get a compound curve, you see that it don't, there's too much pressure and can't compress these fibers down. So you have to make either a pleated cut or go to a different type of a fabric. And so then here we have a, uh, a satin weave that you can see the fibers slide on each other and they can make bends around those corners. So most of our work is in this biaxial cloth and this plain weave because we're just working after purely after strength now that we've got our form. 
Now, like we just mentioned, you can only make that single bend usually on the biaxial cloth. So we're gonna bring it to the edge, make a 90 degree bend around, and then we'll come back and lap over that. Now, if you had a close up view of this fabric, you can see that it's just kind of a rough surface. So that when we go for our next layer, we're gonna have some possibly air gaps in these little grooves here. And you may be able to see some of those showing up in here right now. But the way that we can eliminate those the best possibility is once we scuff this thing, those little grooves would show up even more dramatically. So we are putting a second layer on these laminations. And that is this plain weave goes over the top of that base layer of the bidirectional cloth. And now it's either going to fill with resin because this top layer will hold it trapped there and that'll give us a finer surface. And now when we go back to scuff this new layer to prep for the next lamination, we will have a good surface and we can get a nice sanded surface and expose fibers over the whole surface rather than skipping some of those spots that seem to be a little bit rougher. Now, another thing you're going to notice when I'm doing these laminations on this tub is that some of the layers I will bring to the edge and typically in a layup I will be using one layer of bidirectional cloth that will come to the edge and then the next layer will lap over and make the bend or the transition around it. And then of course I have the plain weave that covers that and it will lap even further. Because when this is being laminated, and you'll see as if you go back and watch some of those videos, this has kind of got a little spring to it. Even though the resin will soften it up and get it to stick down, and there's that little cohesion of the resin that sticks it down, a lot of times it will still try to pop up. And then when you go to this plain weave, it has just a little more surface area so that when you allow it to lap further, then the bidirectional cloth underneath, this outside surface that goes beyond the base layer has a little more adhesion and holds the whole surface down. Now that's why you're seeing me take these bidirectional cloths. The first layer is going to the edge. The second layer is going past the edge, making the wrap around the bend. And then the plain weave cloth, of course, goes beyond that, a little more adhesion, ties it down. And what's gonna happen next is the next layer will be just the opposite. We will have one layer of bidirectional cloth will come to the edge, the next one will make the bend, and then of course the plain weave will go beyond that and hold the edge down. So we're having the panel strength being built up by the two layers of bidirectional cloth. Now the second layer is extending the strength of that panel over onto the next panel and the weave is just like I said to create our surface so that we can get a better bond between the layers. Now as you're watching this process you're seeing that it takes a long time between doing a layer and then next week there's another video doing another layer. Why haven't we just taken the time to do the whole surface over here, the whole bottom of the tub and the tunnel and everything all together? Well this little area here in the tunnel may take me six hours and that's about as long as I can survive doing laminations. It just gets too hard on your back it's just too long of a day to go beyond six hours. And when you have a surface or an area that might take 24 hours, you can see that nobody's going to be able to sit here and work straight through for 24 hours. So things have to be broken into smaller components. And when you break it into smaller components, you're going to have to have a cure time between each one of those components too. And that's okay because we can get a bond between these two layers that's almost as good as a lamination, continuous run through, fresh layer after fresh layer. And that's done by, as you see, always continuously, once the cure is done, scuffing that surface up, sanding down so you're exposing the fiberglass on the old layer. And then when the fiberglass of the new layer, that fresh layer gets laminated to it, it bonds right to the fibers, fibers to fibers. And we're going to go in and take a look at some tests of this to show you what that really actually means in the real world. Anyway, let's jump over, take a look at that. So what we're going to do is create a couple of uh, test samples that we're going to uh, 
throw onto my little strain gauge tester and go through a peel test and destroy them, see what fails and what doesn't, or they're all going to fail, but let's see where they fail. So we're going to create these little samples out of uh, two layers each of my six ounce plain weave cloth. I'm going to saturate those and then uh, fold them into this little T-shape. So laminate them up, use a squeegee to get the resin in, try to get close ratio as I can on all these pieces. Put a little piece of a poly plastic over the top of them as kind of a release ply, and then put these little paper clips on there to bend it in the middle, make a little T out of it. Now these samples I'm going to create are going to go through like four different things. One of them being a uh, fresh lamination. That's what we're working on here now. And that fresh lamination is going to be, we're going to make two T's and join them back to back and use it pull apart. So this is going to be all laminated fresh from both sides, whereas the other samples are going to be partially cured from the previous day. So this is all in one swing on the first day, doing that full lamination. And then the other pieces are going to be laminated and let cure on this piece of aluminum that's got some releasing agent on it. And when they come off, then we'll just be adding to the process and building the rest of the backside. So this uh, fresh lamination will have uh, basically as we would do if we had a lamination that we were creating all in one fell swoop with no stopping. So no drying or no curing between the layers. So here we get the two pieces go together. Got a little piece of block and I'll set it on there. And here you see the next day, the pieces are all cured. Those sitting on the block, that's our full lamination. This one is going to be the sample that we're going to scuff up, sand through to our fiberglass layers so that our next layer will be laminated and bond to the scuffed layer surface for the fiber to fiber. The other one's going to be a same thing, but just no scuffing involved. But I am going to take some solvent and clean them off just because they were sitting on a releasing agent. And hopefully if that releasing agent is on the surface, it would definitely cause it to delaminate. So once they're cleaned, scuffed up, we're going to do the same thing we did the day before. Saturate two layers of fiberglass cloth, put a little piece of uh, poly plastic over it as a releasing agent. Pick them up and get our little clamps, make a T out of it, and then we'll bond it to our uh, previously cured, cured samples. And this is the fixture that we're going to use to test them. This is the strain gauge clamps on one side, and then another clamp on this little uh, sled. And as that's clamped down, that little sled operates by that handle, and we will try to keep an even pressure on each sample and pull them apart and the fail will be registered on our little strain gauge and how much force it took to pull them apart. And this was our first sample, our number four. And as you can see, it fails pretty easily, or at least it fails in kind of a catastrophic mode where it instantly comes apart. Now this is our number three sample. One side was uh, cured and there was no prep on it. And then the new lamination onto that. And you can see it felt pretty much like number four, it just comes apart. So now we're going to move on and uh, go to the samples that are a little bit more realistic of what goes on in the real world. I did have a camera showing from the top here so we could record the numbers. A little more about that later. So this sample is the one that we prepared the surface just as we do when we're working on the tub. Sand down to the fiber layers, bond the new lamination to that. And you're going to see a little bit of a difference in the way it fails. As we put the pressure on it, you're going to see that instead of just falling apart, it actually does appeal. They try to stay together as long as they can, but of course, in the end, it does tear it apart at the fiberglass level. And we will go back and do a little, little kind of postpartum description of these things and take a little closer look. But let's go ahead and take that number four sample, or number one sample, I guess, the fourth test. And this is the one that was all laminated fresh. So there was no mixing of uh, 
cure times. This is all cured at the same time. And we'll go ahead and give a little wrench on the handle. And you'll see that it feels a lot like the scuffed version. For some reason, this one, given a little more elasticity in the layers and hold them together through the whole stroke of that uh, movement of the sled. Okay, now for a post-mortem. Of course we had this, uh, I guess finally broke loose on the clamp, still kind of glued on there. But if you can see this, we have a pretty glossy surface here that certainly never bonded to either one of the layers very well. Whether the reading agent wasn't cleaned off good enough or not, I'm not sure on that, but we will look on to that. Well, now we have number three here. This is the one that had not scuffed, but we did put a new fresh lamination on top of it. And it is real similar to the one where it's just epoxy bonding two solids together. And it is uh, pretty glossy. There is nothing between the fibers where it delaminated. Now on to uh, the scuffed layer. You can see very distinctive difference here in that this is kind of a, still got a glossy surface and this one has right down to the fibers. We peeled at the fiber layer. And in fact, this one held on enough that uh, the two layers of fiberglass failed before the bond did on one side. So one side, of course, uh, Similar, but on the opposite side. So we had some delamination going on before the actual fiberglass failed itself. And which was, uh, when you look at the final sample, which was two fresh laminations together, no cure between, no scuffing. It's very similar to the scuffed layer. I don't know if we can see any difference. Maybe a little better penetration. Of course, getting close to this area where they weren't bonded together. But back in here, this thing's got very much the full surface was all laminated together. Maybe a little lack of cohesion right in there. But very similar. Very similar to having a fresh lamination and a scuffed layer on an old surface. So let's go take a look at the numbers and see if there was anything in the values of the pole between the four of them. Now we did have a second camera set up to kind of record what went on with the string gauge. Now that is a new camera to me and whether I don't know how to get the settings right or there's maybe some kind of a little uh, phase cycle between the two, the camera and the screen, but I just did not very good recording out of them. Um, I was able to zoom in really high to kind of get some numbers and this is what we got to see first number four the first test you know, didn't see anything and then on the test where we had a non-prep surface 336 newtons and then the, the scuff surface 390 and the full lamination 374. Now, that's a little bit uh, of a reverse here and of course, they're so close that I could have just been the stroke of my arm and not pushing that lever at the same smooth motion. But we got a little bit of a reverse there. I would have thought that the, the full lamination would have done a little bit better than the, just the scuffed layer. But that is what we got to see in the failures. So take from that what you will and see if that answers any of your questions on laminating the tub. Well, there are a few answers for those who are wondering about the lamination process in this whole project, especially those occurring on the tub that seem to keep going on and on. Well, we have some other things coming up. We'll be back to some welding. I know I just finished a video a few weeks back that was like part one of building a hub. We will be moving on to part two. It has been delayed because I've had a lot of welder problems lately and I've finally remedied that by just going out and getting me a much better welder. Anyway, those are coming up as long as some other things in the mechanical side again as well. But that is our video for today. Thanks for stopping by and come back. See you again.